Hello viewers, today uh, in this video we will be discussing regarding the class loader in Java, how the class loader works actually, how it loads the dot class file while compiling the Java programs. So let's get started. So basically the class loader revolves around three basic principles that is the <coughs> delegation, visibility and uniqueness. So what is delegation? Delegation is basically the loading request from the child class to the parent class for accessing and for loading the class. Now uh, in class loader actually there is two class that is a parent class as well as this child class. So child class will give the request for loading to the parent class so that comes under the delegation. Next is visibility. Visibility is, states that all the child classes are visible to the parent classes but parent classes cannot see all the child classes which they are loading so that's basically the visibility principle and uniqueness uniqueness states that each of the class file should be loaded only once not multiple times means if a class file is loaded then it should not be loaded again and again which will cause the redundancy problem in uh, java execution so that's why when we uh, compile the java program by using the java c command mm -hmm. it is said that the dot class file is generated and you can run and execute the program multiple times so you need not compile the class again and again only once the compilation is done so that comes under the uniqueness means each and every java file uh, only one instance of that class is generated so this is the three principles next we'll discuss regarding the types of class loaders which are there in java so there are three main types of class loaders that is the bootstrap class loader or the primordial class loader then there is an extension class loader then there is an application class loader so what is bootstrap class loader bootstrap class loader is the parent class loader of all the class loaders it consists of a rt.jar file that is the realtime.jar file now this rt.jar file can be found in the jre that is the java runtime environment inside that you can have the lib directory inside that you will have this rt.jar file now this rt.jar file is responsible for <laughs> holding all of the compiled classes from the uniqueness property means if one class is loaded then uh, the instance of that class is stored in this rt.jar file so you should not mess with this rt.jar file otherwise your program execution may fail and it may throw some uh, errors and exceptions like uh, no class depth found exception and java.lang no such uh, class error so these kinds of errors and exceptions are mainly caused by this rt.jar file next we have this extension class loader this extension class loader is found also under the jre liban extension directory or else uh, there is some pointing to this uh, class loader by this uh, java.dirs.ext it's a pointing from some other external file to this class loader and uh, this external uh, class file is under this launched by sun dot miscellaneous dot launcher dollar app class loader so this class loader is responsible for holding all of the extension files which are caused under this next is the application class loader application class loader is the class loader which we uh, compile or which we use during the jdbc connections basically having a class path separately for each of the uh, the connector basically in uh, JDBC programs. So there is a usage of class path or hyphen CP or a manifest file basically in this. So manifest file is nothing but a kind of a jar file which stores the metadata about the jar file execution, its indexing and all those. So these are the three types of class loaders that are uh, there in uh, Java class loader and most importantly the class loader is a class which is there inside the java 
it's uh, pre-installed pre-built and is responsible for doing all of these things now let us see how it actually works like uh, as i said when uh, you have got a dot java file and when you do the compilation of this by using the java c command uh, how that class file is actually being executed and why it is not uh, recommended that you have to uh, compile the class file again and again so for that we have this flow diagram to understand in detail so whenever uh, the compilation start it starts actually from the application class loader from there it goes up the hierarchy I mean this is the child class it will call its parent class this will call its parent class this is how the flow of execution is done so first we have a request to load a class that is we have a dot class file <coughs> first it will give the request to the application class loader application class loader will find whether that class is there within its directory if it is not then it will load the class request to its parent class that is the extension class loader extension class loader will go to its jre lib external directory and if it is not found by application class loader it will find its class and it will be loaded by the extension class loader if not extension class loader then it will go up to the parent direct that is the bootstrap class loader bootstrap class loader will finally load the class from the rt.jar file that is its main file where all the compiled classes are there from there it will load the bootstrap class loader and now after this if you cannot load the class means there is some error or exception maybe in your uh, syntactical uh, or logical error uh, where you might have uh, misplaced the name or uh, you may have changed the directory or you ha may have moved your dot class file or dot java file somewhere else so in that case if it uh, doesn't get the required uh, class file uh, it will throw such uh, exceptions like no class def found and some error java dot lang dot uh, no such class error uh, so this is the working of the class loader in java hope you enjoyed this video if you found this video helpful please hit a like button and if you still not subscribe the channel please subscribe thanks for watching this video